Hello everyone, my name is Barbara and I would like to welcome you all to our latest Novage webinar episode. In this week's episode, discover Vectorworks 2015. Vectorworks Architect 2015 has just been released. This version of Vectorworks has some powerful capabilities, techniques, and in this webinar we will focus on just a few powerful techniques to cover them in detail. Some of the powerful changes to Vectorworks um, 2015 relate to stories and walls. If you would like to learn how to make your stories more powerful, how to use stories to control wall components, and how to use the new curtain wall, then you should definitely attend this webinar. Presenting the Novich webinar is Jonathan Pickup, an architect trained in New Zealand and in the UK with more than 30 years of experience. He has been, yes, <laughs> he has been writing and producing Vectorworks manuals and providing customer support for more than 15 years. His company, ArconCAD, is the premier provider of third-party manuals and training resources for Vectorworks. Before we get going, here's an overview of what we do at Novag. Novag is one of the largest online design software stores. We offer a huge assortment of software solutions that cater to virtually every designer's need. Put us to the test and come visit our page at noveg.com. And for more daily software news and limited time promotions, keep visiting the Noveg blog and follow us on Facebook, Google Plus, and Twitter. Coming up next week, 3ds Max and SpaceMouse Pro workflows. In this webinar, Autodesk Technical Evangelist and SpaceMouse Pro user Chris Murray will demonstrate some of the new features in 3ds Max 2015 and will also cover some very specific workflows that leverage the 3D Connection Space Mouse Pro and how it can be used in 3ds Max. Last but not least, today's presentation is free and is being recorded live. If you want to rewatch this or any webinar episode, you can find it on our, on our YouTube and Vimeo channel. Just search for Novad. And now I'm going to pass the baton to Jonathan. Uh, I know he's ready to go. So without further ado, I'll introduce you to Discover Back Towards 2015. Thank you, Barbara. You just need to make me the presenter. I'd like to have a quick look. This is a, one of the new curtain walls in Vectorworks. They're really cool. And a curtain wall in Vectorworks is now just a wall style. So you can jump between a curtain wall and a regular wall just by using the replace command. So curtain walls are going to be quite different. But the first thing that I'd like to talk to you about is the change to stories. Stories in Vectorworks have had a bit of an overhaul. Let me just have a look at my stories dialog box. Now in previous copies of Vectorworks, I used to say that stories were a collection of design layers because in the past we only had design layers to create our stories. With Vectorworks 2015, they've introduced something new to stories and that's the ability to have something called a level. A level is a setting that you can be used to control building elements but it does not always have an associated design layer. In this dialog box here, we've got a foundation level, which is three feet below the, uh, the elevation of the story. So that's the elevation of my story. I've got a level here called foundation. It's minus three feet. And it also has, just here you can see there's a, there's a word there, that is its associated design layer. We also have a level here called ledge, which is one foot below, but it does not have an associated design layer. So I guess the first question you might be thinking is, well, what's the point of having a level? In my architect tutorial manual, there's a chapter on, on what stories are and how to deal with stories, and I had to rewrite that for Vectorworks 2015. And so the phrase I used when I rewrote that was to say that Stories are a collection of settings that control your building elements. So think of the levels as being setting controls, it's controlling things like the foundation wall, the bottom of the footing, the bottom of the slab, the skirting or the baseboard, 
the top of the cladding, the bottom of the cladding. Um, intermediate floor slabs, for example, can be used, can be controlled by these levels. So the terminology that you use when you create your levels is actually entirely up to you. I'm actually to have on the screen at the moment a standard Vectorworks template from a standard I just used to create a new document. I used the architectural imperial template and this is what is shown on it. If I create a new story, I get an ability to choose which levels I want to have associated to that story. This one doesn't have too many levels, but I can always create new ones if I want. I find that some of the terminology, for example, ledge, bottom of structure, bottom of structure, top of structure, I understand why, it's, why it has those words, but to me personally, it's not specific enough to allow me to know when to use those in my different parts of my building. So from my point of view, what I'd probably like to see, and what I've created with some of my own templates, are levels that make sense to me. And I believe that what you're going to need to do as you look at these levels in Vectorworks 2015, is to think up names that actually make sense. So for example, instead of having ledge, which can be used for the bottom of the cladding or the bottom of the wall, maybe it would be better to have something called bottom of footing. So let's create a level type and I'm going to call it bottom of footing. So I'm going to use this, this level to control my footings in my, in my project. We need to give it an elevation. Let's make it minus four feet. Do we need to create a layer? Maybe not, because this is really just used to control the three-dimensional height or the elevation of where the bottom of my footings go. So no, I don't need a, a new layer for that. So I should really tick it. What if I had a foundation wall? Could I use this one for it? I sure could. I'm going to change that one, so let's edit that one. I want this to be the bottom of my foundation. In fact, what I'd like to have is a different one. I'd like one that controls the bottom of my foundation wall and it won't create a level. So let's create a new level here. I'm going to create a new level type and this is going to be called bottom of foundation. Now I could call this the top of my footing. It, it completely up to you. But I, I call it the bottom of footing because it's the bottom of my foundation wall. Um, so why don't I call it top of footing? As I said, the terminology has to make sense to you, doesn't really have to make sense to other people. It would be ideal if it did, but it doesn't have to. So do we need to create a layer for this? No. What's the elevation? Let's make this minus three feet. Um, three feet, that's not quite enough. Let's make it minus three feet, four inches should give me an eight inch footing. Do I need to create a layer? No, I don't need a design layer for this. So I've got a bottom of footing, I've got a top of footing, and this, is, this foundation here is going to create a design layer for me, which I may not want. I may want to use this one here, the top of structure. I, it's totally up to you what you call these things, but again, I find that top of structure could easily be misconstrued to be the top of a beam, for example, rather than the top of a slab. So maybe it's a good idea to create a new level, and we'll call this one bottom of slab. So the bottom of my slab, I want to finish about four inches below the finished floor, so minus four inches. Do I need a layer for this? Well, depends on the, sky, on the scale of the project, but it might be a good idea to create a design layer for this wall. Or I could create a design layer that had my slabs, my foundations, my footings, all of that stuff. So we could call this foundations, or just foundation. Layer wall height, I'm going to make that zero. 
So I've got, so now that I've got my story and I've got some of my levels set up, I want uh, to create a finished floor, that's okay. I don't want it to be two inches above, I want it to be a zero. So I've got a finished floor, which is zero. I have a bottom of slab, which is my foundation. I have a, I don't need that bottom of structure, I don't need that ledge. I've got, where's my foundation gone? Yep, foundation, so I've got a bottom of slab, I've got a top of footing, I've got a bottom of footing. And that's story one. And the elevation of that story will be zero. That might cause me a conflict with the one that's already there, that's all. Yep. So I'm going to uh, see if I can create this as story number three. I'm, I, it's a little confused at the moment because I didn't get rid of the ones that were already there. I just started making them. So my ground floor, I don't need that. Roof, I don't need that just at the moment. And let's edit this and make that back to story dash one and that's number one, and the elevation is zero. So I've now got a finished floor, I've got a bottom of slab, which I seem to have confused it with something else, so let's go back to that. That bottom of slab shouldn't be my foundation, but I've created it anyway. So, does, is it, Barbara, has anyone got questions about what I've done so far? None so far, so... Press on. I'm surprised. I thought that might have been confusing to, to do all that. Yeah. Okay, so let me create my bottom of slab foundation. I'm going to create some walls that, that, go between, that create my footings, and I'm going to create a wall that creates my foundation wall as well. So back to my wall tool. Here's my wall. The overall thickness is going to be 12 inches, and now I've got my insertion options. So this part of the dialog box hasn't changed very much. The definition, the insertion options, the textures is new. That was hidden away. They've brought it to its own tab now. So this is the same as we've had in Vectorworks 2013, 2014. The top of this wall, I'm going to create a wall for my footing. The top of my wall, the top bound, is the top of my footing. The bottom bound is the bottom of my footing. Jonathan, I but have a question. But create a wall that sits. Yep. There is a question. I think it's a little bit delayed. Um, I see you're adding levels rather than editing default levels. Any reason? Um, yeah. Yeah, let's go back to that. Okay, so let's start with, uh, an easy one might be, let's change this one called ledge, and we'll call it bottom of cladding. Uh, edit my story, to my default. So I could change this one called ledge, here it is here. Let's edit that, and we could call it bottom of cladding. So it's a new level type. Oh, can't spell. Bottom of cladding, okay. And its elevation is minus two inches relative to the story. Okay, okay. And bottom of cladding, two inches. So you could do it that way. You could certainly edit the default story levels that are there. I guess I choose not to, not to edit them to start with, just so that I can show you how you can rename your ones or create your own ones. But there can be, um, there might be a bit of a challenge. If I have got a, a wall type that uses that level called um, ledge, Vectorworks might get confused if I've renamed that ledge and called it bottom of cladding. There is going to be a change in the way you deal with walls and levels. Walls and levels can now be connected together when we go through the dialog box and we create our 
walls, we can choose to connect the top bounding of our wall to a level and the bottom bounding of our wall to a level, which is really good. It's really powerful. But there is a bit of a challenge, and that is if you then give that wall style to a friend or to a colleague and they don't have those levels in the file, Vectorworks won't make the levels. If it doesn't make the levels, it then gets confused about where that wall stops and starts. So there's a connection between the levels you choose to use and your walls. Now that's going to mean that if you want to have, like I've done, where I've renamed all my levels, I need to then make sure I use this file as my template for all of my, all of my projects. So I can still store my wall styles in my wall style library. I can still access them from the pull down menu. But I've got to make sure that my default levels or that my file starts off with a template that has all of those levels in it. Also, there's a question from our common friend, Neil Barman, that says, I noticed that some levels were duplicated by Vectorworks when Jonathan edited them. Uh, what happens if you delete the duplicated levels uh, that you don't want? Don't worry, Neil, you can't delete the duplicated levels. Vectorworks just keeps putting them in there. Okay. And it's part of the default, Neil. So what's happened is that when Vectorworks builds their default levels, um, it keeps putting them in. And I find that slightly confusing, particularly two levels of the same name. And you can only choose one of them. You can't choose them both. You know, so when I choose that finished floor, so I've edited that finished floor and given it a different height. But notice that the default one is turned up as well, with its two inches above. Even though I've edited it, it still turns up. And sometimes I was finding, um, I'm not sure it's still doing it, but things like ledge can sometimes still turn up. So um, some of these you can't get rid of. Their defaults, they'll always be there, but I just think it's um, important to have a clear naming structure for these so that you know clearly what they are. I just find bottom of structure and top of structure a little bit too general for my liking. Uh, where was I? I was going to create a foundation wall, wasn't I? So back to my walls. So the top of my wall is going to be top of footing, where's that gone, top of footing, and the bottom bounding is the bottom of footing. And the definition, that's 12 inches wide. Okay, now when I draw this, I should get a little 12 inch wall, and it's got a fixed height. So if I create another wall, this time it's only 8 inches wide, and it's determined by the bottom of slab and its bottom uh, top of footing. So this wall is designed to go from the top of the footing to the bottom of my slab. Click OK. Now I just need to make sure I turn off my auto join walls. Otherwise it'll try and join the wall above and the wall below, which I don't want it to do. And I'm going to draw down the center line. So that's a foundation wall and a footing wall controlled by my levels. So if we go back to my levels and I make changes to those levels, back to my stories, back to story one, let's edit those. So we've decided that the top of the footing is too high. Uh, let's say it's too high by a certain amount. Let's, let's just take this slowly. Top of my footing, let's edit that. So we think that only needs to be two feet, four inches. Two feet, four inches. Okay. And the bottom of my footing, we'll edit that, that only needs to be three feet. Now if you look carefully, when I click OK, we should see that wall shorten up. The footing should stay the same height. So, you know, that should, should still stay 8 inches, I think it's 8 inches, uh, but you should see it jump up in the air. 
yeah, that wasn't quite what I had in mind. What have I done wrong there? Let's go back to that. So, oh, I know what I did. I was so quick to make those changes. Bottom of the footing. Let's set it at that level. I, I made that three feet. I should have made it minus three feet. I was so busy doing the mathematics, I, I forgot to put the minuses in. And the top of my footing, this one here, is minus two feet, four inches. Okay. That was better. That's what I wanted. So I forgot the minus signs. That made my walls jump up in the air. So I thought that that was a really powerful way of being able to control your walls. So I could put a slab on top of those. I'm just going to use a rectangle and just create a quick slab. Right click, create objects from shapes and that's going to be a slab. Now my slab's too thick, my slab's actually 106 uh, inches thick, 150 mils, so it's actually too thick anyway, but I'm not going to worry too much about it. But what you may have noticed is that when, as I change from a top plan view to a 3D view, I'm changing to an isometric, sorry, it's not just an isometric, but it's in perspective, but it's also rendered in OpenGL. And that's one of the new things in Vectorworks, is a preference to control the changes between your views. So we now have this ability to choose the render mode when changing from a 3D view or from top plane to a 3D view and also changing the projection. So my choices are to go to OpenGL and to go to a normal perspective. Now I quite like it. I used to be quite convinced that wireframe was alright, that you could learn to work with wireframe. Since I've been playing with Vectorx 2015, it took me a little while to get used to the idea that everything was rendered, but now I like it. And when I change to wireframe, now it's starting to look a little odd. So I quite like this. It's something new, so you might need to get used to it. But I do like it a lot. Jonathan, a now question. I'd like to draw. Jonathan, yeah? a quick question from Mark Green. How is this any different than changing the layer height settings and having foundation on the foundation layer and the footer on the footer layer? What is the benefit? I guess the, the, ben, the main benefit is the reduction in the number of um, layers that you end up having. So you can keep more information in the same layer, but it's still controlled by those settings. Maybe the changes will become a bit more obvious when we start to use those levels to control the wall components, which is what I'm going to do next. So in, in Vectorx 2015, you can assign individual parts of the wall to finish at different levels which you can't do with a layer. So let's create a wall style. I just need to check. I'm just going to go back and check to make sure I've got all the levels that I need. So I've got bottom of footing, bottom of that's right, bottom of that. Uh, do I have bottom of cladding? Yep, I've got a bottom of cladding. I need a new level. I'm going to call this uh, base, baseboard. I call it a skirting where I live, but lots of people call it a baseboard. And its elevation is six inches. Doesn't need a design layer. And better turn that on. So baseboard, finished floor, top of structure. I don't remember turning that one on, but. Um, footing, footing, slab, cladding. Okay, I think I've got everything I need. So now I'm going to create a wall style for the outside cladding of my building. Now my assumption is I'm going to use cladding, which is um, siding. I call them weatherboards. So I'm going to call it cladding because it could be anything. I need a class for this so that I can control it with um, parts. So I'm going to import some classes that I've created earlier. 
these are my standards and I'm going to import my war component classes. So that war component, I'm going to import all of those. So that's my cladding on the outside of the building. It's about an inch and a half, 31 millimeters I usually use. So the component top, where do I want this part of the wall to stop? Well, I want it to stop relative to the rest of the wall, whatever that does. Where do I want the bottom of this to stop? And this is where it becomes quite, quite impressive, I think, this ability to stop this component at the bottom of my cladding. So when I create my wall style, I don't have to create a different wall style for each story of the building or for each different construction method. When I've got this wall, when I've got this exterior cladding and it's covering a concrete slab, I've only got to make my cladding go down a couple of inches. But if it was going in front of, say, um, Let's say, let's say, let's say, for example, we had a timber floor. I'd want my cladding to go down below the, the timber floor construction. So instead of going down a couple of inches, it might go down 10, 10 or 12 inches. Now I can change that setting using the levels rather than creating a new wall definition. So that makes your walls much more flexible. So, uh, Barbara, any questions about that? I'm, I'd be surprised if there aren't any. And not about that, not yet. Okay, all right. So I'm going to use class style, color by class, class style, class thickness, and I'm going to have no pen on the right side. What about the texture? Vectorworks have got some built-in textures, so I think I should be able to find one called siding tan. There we are. And okay. So that's built the first part of my wall. Let's click on the new button. This is a cavity because where I live we always use, uh, not always, but very often we use a ventilated cavity. So I'm going to put in a component, cavity, the thickness is uh, three quarters of an inch. Yes. Now I could, I could have this one relative to the story and it could also finish it at the bottom of my cladding and that would make it quite powerful when I use it on different wall constructions or different building constructions and I adjust my levels. So class style, color by class, class style, color by class, class thickness and no pen on the right side and no texture. It's going to be inside the building anyway, I'm not going to see it. Jonathan. Another component, which is my structural frame. Jonathan, if the conditions are different on each story, do you have a, do you have a level heights by story? Is that the question? Yes. Do I have level heights by story? Yes. Um, well, the, the levels are... I'm using, oh sorry, oh, maybe I didn't explain that part of it. When you create your levels, the levels are only associated to that one story. So each story has the ability to choose its own levels. So the bottom of the cladding on the downstairs might be different to the bottom of the cladding height on the upper floor. So each story has its ability to, to choose the elevation of that level relative to the story. They might have the same name, but the elevation can be different for each story of the building. I hope that answered the question. The thickness of this frame, this is a six inch frame, and it's going to use class style. And class. Doesn't need a texture. What was the feedback? Barbara, did that answer the question? The feedback was it answered the question perfectly. <laughs> okay, thanks. Uh, framing. And now I'm going to put lining on the inside of my building.
Now a quick one while you uh, are setting up. Can that wall style still be used? Sorry, what was the question, Barbara? Can that wall style still be used? If you can give a quick... I don't understand that question. Can the wall style still be used? Uh, the, uh, the one that I'm building at the moment? I think so. Yeah, well, I'm going to use it. I'm going to save it as a wall style. Um, I've lost my previous ones, unfortunately, because I didn't save them. Um, but the one that I'm creating at the moment, it can be used on any project provided that the project has the levels that I'm calling. So where I've referred to a level for the top of the wall or the bottom of the wall, the project that I copy this wall into has to have those levels in it, which is why it's a good idea to create a template with all of your standard level names in it and then use that to build your projects. I see. And what if, another question, what if the second floor story doesn't have the bottom of cladding level? Would this wall style still work? No, you'll have to have the bottom of cladding level in order to use this wall style. Otherwise, it will get confused. Okay, I want a texture on this, which is there's a stucco texture I want to use, an internal lining. I think it's that one. Okay. That's my lining. Now, what about my skirting or my, my baseboard? Skirting, I'm going to give this the same wall component as my internal lining. It's thickness, about three quarters of an inch. Now, the component top is relative to my story, which is my baseboard. So that's going to fix my baseboard to the right height in this building. Now, I've, I've been teaching other people, and one of them said, but I don't use these baseboards or these skirtings. What I'd like, Jonathan, is a negative detail. Well, actually, you can still use the same concept, but what, I do, what I'd do in that case is I'd make my, my internal lining stop at the bottom relative to my baseboard, and so you can easily set a 10 mil negative joint around your, uh, your floor if you want. So don't just think that what I'm showing you is just for... Um, traditional domestic construction, you can also use it for modern construction or for commercial construction. Uh, now this is going to be solid, it's going to use the class style, color by class, and I could go on setting all those, but the important thing I want to do is to change this to the plywood. Okay. So just before I close this bar, any questions about me setting up my wall components? So, no, I think uh, Patrick was asking, so therefore you still need several duplicates of wall style, right? No, no, that, okay. this is the, the idea is that because you're going to have the upper floor, um, because the upper floor is still going to use the level called bottom of cladding, on the upper floor, the bottom of cladding can have a completely different elevation relative to the story than the bottom floor. So on the downstairs, we can set a bottom of cladding elevation of, say, minus 10 inches, but on the floor above, it has a completely independent level, although it's got the same name, bottom of cladding, it's got a completely different setting for its elevation, so you can set that to zero. So this does get around that problem that we've had in the past of the multiple wall styles for the different stories of the building. So while it's the same wall style, and while your stories have the same layer names, the settings on those levels are independent. Well, the feedback is so brilliant, Jonathan. Top down is layer elevation, top down, oh, back to front. Sorry, I was listening to you, Barbara, now I'm more back to front. Um, what am I looking for? Bottom bound is my layer elevation. The top bound is my layer wall height. That's better. Sorry, Barbara, I got a bit confused there. Um, so caps, the class, that hasn't changed, so you've still got to make sure you put that on the class. Textures, use component textures. 
when you're building your walls, if you put the walls on the, if you put the textures on the components, then use component textures when you come to do this part. So let's save this and I'll call it wall style one. Okay. So let's go back to my, I think it should be floor three. Um, layer options, show snap others. Let's draw our wall. And that should have done it. There we are. So there's my outside cladding, there's my cavity, and there's my wall frame. Now don't forget, this isn't new in Vectorworks 2015, but don't forget you can draw the wall style, but you can draw the wall based on the core component. Now if you've forgotten what the core component is, you choose one of these and you click where it says core, and that makes that wall style Oh, sorry, that sets that component as the core of the wall. That's a real benefit for being able to draw, because most of us, when you're drawing to a dimension, you're worried about the framing dimension, not the outside cladding dimension, and this allows you to draw based on that. So let's draw that again. I'll use the edge of my slab. Uh, what have I used? Uh, better set it to the left side. So what we should find when I'm finished is that my frame sits on the very edge of the slab with my uh, cavity and my wall cladding outside it. So how's that? I've got my cavity, got my cladding. Now if I use the same wall style on the floor above, I can control independently the height of that um, com uh, component. Let's go back to my stories. Bottom of cladding. Now in this construction, I need that to be minus 10 inches. Hasn't changed yet, but just watch. So you see that bar where it just jumped down? So that's, that's why I think it's a great way to use these. Great. There's also uh, Luke that asks, uh, also Luke is asking, um, this is great for baseboard, is there any way to do two different materials with one below the other? I don't think so. I haven't found it yet. Okay. I just want to put a door in. Because I thought that was quite a neat trick, the way the baseboard is now broken by the door. And the settings on the door, I could give that, um, where's the trim? Um, jam, I've forgotten where I, where I find trim. We can use classes, the, we can actually set the uh, 2D visualization, we can now set to use classes to control the graphic style of the doors, which is quite nice. Um, gives you a lot of freedom and control over the, the settings on the door. Plus if you use classes, you can use viewport overrides when you're building your viewports. Architrave, that's what I was looking for, interior architrave. My door must be back to front. But I thought it would be quite cool that you can actually have the architrave going up and over the, the building. Any other questions, Barbara? Yes. Any advantage with these two uh, new level type for atrium walls that may span two or more stories? Sorry, could you repeat that? Yes. An advantage with these new level type for atrium walls that may span two or more stories? I don't know. I'd have to think about that. I don't, I don't have an answer straight off the top of my head. It hasn't something I've, it's not something I've thought about. Okay. Okay, so here's, here's my wall style library that I've been playing with since I got back to X 2015. And you might notice I've actually created a whole lot of wall styles already. And I've created, I've connected all of their baseboards or skirtings that I call them. And so I've got walls that are internal walls, external walls. One of the new things in Vectorworks, textures, 
I'll just, uh, as my active document, let's find the exterior cladding, this one here, I think it's the bluish one. Let's edit that texture because one of the things that they've introduced is this new edit surface hatch. And this allows you to choose from your hatch library, this is my hatch library, you can choose any of the hatches that you've got in your library. So for example, I might want to use one called 150. And that line, and that line, and that line, they line up pretty well with the coloured graphic of my texture. But if they don't, you can adjust them. You can stretch it, you can rotate it. As I said, I'm not quite sure why you'd want to rotate it, but you can. Let's just reset it all back to the beginning. Now what's the point of this surface hatch? Well, in OpenGL, the hatches look pretty good, or the, the, the textures look pretty good. But when you create elevations of your building, traditionally, you've tended to do a hidden line in rendering type thing. So what happens in Vectorworks now, when you go hidden line rendering, if you have a look, the hatches that I assigned to that texture have now appeared in the hidden line rendering. So we've now got the ability to jump between the sort of graphic, the, you know, the colored graphic, and the hidden line graphic. What I haven't tried is creating a viewport where you use both at the same time. That could be, it should be quite easy, I just haven't done it myself. Curtain walls. One of the new things in Vectorworks 2015, I think this is really powerful, it's a curtain wall. Let me just start with this curtain wall and I'm going to, um, it's a curtain wall is, is now a wall style. So you can choose any wall style you like. There's a wall, let's make that back to a curtain wall. And you've now got curtain wall settings that control the grid. So you've got, a cur you've got a setting that controls where that one starts, where that one goes, where the first offset is, second offset, and so on. And that makes it quite powerful. So I'm just going to remove that door. So you can now put doors and windows into a curtain wall by dragging, you know, by doing your normal insert a door, and it'll punch a hole in that curtain wall for you. I think that's quite powerful, and you might notice that I've got some textures on my frames and on my panels. So the verticals and horizontals are called frames, and the bit in the middle, that's called a panel. There's a brand new tool called the Edit Curtain Wall Tool. If I click on a vertical frame, sorry, a, a vertical panel, out of that whole wall, this tool selects just that one vertical frame that I've clicked on. If I hit the delete key, it will delete that particular part. I can delete parts that I don't want. I can stretch parts that I like. I can even make them stretch at an angle. So let's stretch that all the way back to there. I'm going to delete all of those. I'm going to stretch it from one side to the other. And you'll notice that as I stretch it across the vertical frames, Vectorworks then splits that up. I don't want that bit, and I don't want that bit. Which I, might, I reckon this makes us very powerful, this thing. So this, is the, this allows me to select a panel. So I can click, you can see it highlights the whole panel. If I right click, I can edit that panel. I can insert a door, or I can insert a window. So if I right click here, I can insert a door, and it puts a door in there for me. If I go back and select my door, there it is, there's my door, so I can change the settings, I can make it glazed, it's a flush door at the moment, let's just find that door, uh, where's its leaf type, let's make it glazed, and so it's now a glazed door, better make sure I give it a 
some solid graphic. I can go back to my edit curtain wall tool. I could pick, right click on that. Let's edit my panel. So why don't I change the texture? Let's give it blue. I can edit this texture. Uh, there's a plywood here somewhere. I forgot where my plywood is. I'll make it stone. But what I was trying to show you is that you can change the texture on each panel individually if you want. You can set the texture over all of the panels through this through the settings on the dialog box. So it's, it's powerful as anything. Jonathan, I have three questions about curtain walls, if you want to hear them now. Yep. Is the text texture only for render works? Yep. And Sorry. Yep. Yeah. Would this be used for storefront systems too? Yes. And uh, last uh, question, can I move framing members by points? Can you what, what framing members? Move can them I move by, by points? Uh, I don't know about that one. Using this tool on the curtain, I'm not sure. I haven't tried that one. I'd have to. Um, I'd these have to are, have a go at it. These are good questions, aren't they? Frames. Yeah, they are good questions. Yeah. I can move the whole grid. Um, I'm not sure I can move the individual one. I'm not sure if I can use the move by points tool, but I can certainly type in the distance that I want to move that. Can the walls be tilted? No. So that's a wall. It's a standard wall. I'm going to replace it with a wall style called curtain wall. Oh, that was a, oh, I should have made a, a curving curtain wall style. But the, the, the walls, can, you can use um, curved curtain walls. So you can make them curved, you can make them straight, you can use the settings to control the top bounding, you can move the grid, you can delete parts of the grid if you don't want, you can add doors and windows. I just think it's uh, very powerful. And uh, speaking of I which, thought that was pretty, I thought it was a pretty cool trick. Yeah, speaking we of which, just go, I need a window in there, and it just pops in a window. Exactly. The next question is uh, just this: Can you combine a door and on in window, or is just fixed windows? Uh, you can put you can put a, a door next to a window. But I think the question is, um, I think they're trying to sneak in a question and say, can this replace uh, Wind Door Manager, you know, the, the Australian Wind Door object. Uh -huh. And it's still, that is still an individual door, and if you put an awning window next to it, it's still going to be an individual awning window. They will not still be in the same frame. So how are we getting on for time, Barbara? We're up to 10 minutes to the end, so we've yes. got a lot of questions to Yeah, answer. we have some, so I'll continue on the question pertaining the curtain walls, and then I'll go back to the ones uh, that have been asked before. So can you edit the curtain wall frame profile, uh, for instance, outside glazed or center glazed systems? Yes. Yes, you can. So when you create your curtain wall style, We've, uh, so a curtain, a curtain wall is a wall style, so you can set it up being exactly the way you want. You can set up the grids, you can go to the frame settings, and you can choose the overall depth, but you can also change um, the custom depth. Is it that one? And also, will the... Using a custom depth. Yes. Yes. Also, will the windows adapt automatically to the opening size and shaper in the curtain wall? 
Um, the windows will always be the size of the grid. I don't know if you noticed, but I put a window in there, and it just picked up instantly the size of the grid. If I put a window in this one here with the angled, you, know, you can see it's got an angled frame, it'll still insert a square window. It won't insert a window that follows that slope. So if I go back to that curtain wall tool, and I insert a window there, Can you see that, Barbara, how it's actually put in a square window rather than a window that follows the slope of my frame? Yeah, that's awesome. Sorry, Sorry about that. No. Next. And next. How does the addition of levels to stories now affect export to DWG? I don't think it does. So that when you export to DWG, um, it depends whether you're exporting the 2D or the 3D model, but if you're exporting the 3D model, it'll export the, the geometry rather than the levels. VectorX is using the levels to create the geometry, that's the height of things, so that when you export it, it'll send out that information exactly as you created it, I hope. I see. What nomenclature would you suggest for naming wall styles when using levels for a template? Um, well, I still like, when I'm looking, I, I think it comes back to how you want to find your walls when you're looking for them. And the, the non clementia that I use for my wall styles, I don't know if anyone's noticed this, but when I go to a wall style, I tend, I, and I, I've got to be careful here, um, Barbara, because I'm using metric, I tend to work in metric. And so I put the, the thickness of my cladding, or the thickness of my lining, then my frame, and, and this is an internal wall. So this is an external wall, so I've got my cladding, my cavity, my framing, and my lining. And that helps me to see what kind of wall that is, rather than calling it an external weatherboards with a cavity, which is, I find, very awkward. I found that I just started to look at the numbers that I've used. And those numbers tell me quite a lot about what, are, what my wall construction is. This one's 45 millimeters worth of polystyrene insulation with 20 mil cavity, 140 framing, and 13 lining. And that seems to work very well for my mind, but I think that if you're going to, um, I find that some of, these, uh, some of these names, I'm not quite sure. Um, you know, to me, I can't, these ones I can go and grab instantly, I know exactly what they mean. These ones I have to spend a bit longer reading what the whole name of that wall style is. It's a curtain wall, multi-story, it's got horizontal fins, it's double glazed. Um, and there it is. And this wall has been created, uh, I've drawn this wall in a file that is not set up to use those wall styles, the, the levels. And that's why my walls ended up like that. And I think if I change the height of the wall, there we are. I can change the height of the wall there. And that's just a horizontal wall. It's got no verticals. It's just got horizontal fins. It's the curtain wall is really powerful. I think it's going to take us a while to figure out all the options for the curtain wall. But I think it's uh, very powerful. Looks like it. Really cool. And I have a question for Mark Green. If you're giving another person a project to work on and you view stories, do you also have to give them your wall styles or will the wall styles go with the project so they have everything they need to work on the project? Well, just like VectorX 2014, if you give someone your project, they get all the resources that are, that are part of that project. So the levels that you've used, the stories you've used, the wall styles you've used, the textures you've used, the symbols you've used, they all go in that one project. Well, that's great. And, yeah. And speaking of VectorWorks 2014, what hoops will I need to go through to bring up a project from 2014 or before? That's from Tali. Not too many hoops. The, what you will find, though, is that uh, a project from VectorX 2014 or before doesn't have all the levels that now make VectorX 2015 so powerful. But 
you can still use um, the 2014 technology. So 2014 didn't have levels. So when you created walls, you created walls that didn't connect to levels but had actual settings on them. Uh, I don't think I've got any in this file, but if I go back to my wall and look at one of these, need one of the outside ones. Let's look at that one. Now this one has been set up to use the bottom of the cladding relative to story. If you bring in a wall style from Bechtworks 2014 and before, it'll be set up this way around where it'll be relative to the wall and that might say minus 50 there. So the walls will still, the wall styles will still work um, or it, the, the new technology with the stories won't change that. Doesn't change follow top peaks, doesn't change follow bottom peaks. The real trick is this ability to, is to that it's now relative to a level. And the bottom offset there is zero. So you can actually just carry on using them. It, it won't have any effect. But you won't be able to use the power of these levels unless you change your wall styles. Now I have a question from a little way back about um, exterior claddings. Can one, wall, can one wall style have two different exterior claddings, one above the other in the same plane? Not in the same plane. They have to be in different planes. But it is easy to create a wall cladding. So you're going to have to cheat a little bit. But you can create a wall cladding that stops at a certain height really easily. Uh, I don't want to do it in this file. I think I might have one that I can... In this file I can do it. So let's go back to my stories. And let's edit my stories. And I want to create a new level called top of cladding. And that's going to finish four feet above the floor. Four feet. Top of cladding, make sure I turn that on. Now I'm going to change this wall style. Wall style one. And I'm going to edit my cladding. And the cladding is now going to stop relative to my top of cladding. didn't save it today. Uh, let's call it wall style 2, that should be fine. And then I can swap one wall to wall style 2 and one to wall style 1. Now in the past it was quite tricky to do that, particularly where you had a wall peak above because that wall style would then tend to that the you, we couldn't do skirtings or baseboards before because it would tend to follow the peaks in the wall. So when you set up your wall styles, make sure that you then let's look at the cladding. Don't follow the top wall peaks, otherwise my cladding will go up when I move my wall up. And let's replace that. So that when I go back to, uh, let's edit that wall, I'm just going to drag that end up. So you'll notice that my outside cladding didn't change. What you don't know, um, that I, can, I, can, I know that I've made a mistake here, I know that my internal skirting was set to follow the top wall peaks. So it's actually grown on the inside. Great if that's what you want, but if that's not what you want, that can be a bit of a challenge. So what I forgot to do with my skirting was to say, don't do that. Don't follow the top wall peaks. Because that's, that's what I really want it to be like. I want that skirting to be constant height. Any other questions, Barbara? Yes. Suppose you want to have brick at the lower part of the wall and cladding at the upper part. Uh, this is quite common construction, right? Yeah, 
Um, and what you're going to have to have is you're going to have to have the brick component and the cladding component here. And all you need to do is to make sure you've got them the right thicknesses. Now in construction terms, the cladding tends to be, um, well it, it's, it's going to look, you can make it look okay, but in construction terms, you're going to have to cheat a little bit with the overlap of the two claddings through here. So you will end up with your, you will have to end up with that. Um, uh, you might, you could do it so you actually stop. You could, you could actually make it so that your top cladding stops at the height of your top of your bricks, and you can have your bricks below. But you are going to end up with a bit of a gap in the wall. So when you cut a section through it, it's not going to look perfect but you can make it look all right in 3D for the elevations. But the sections, I don't think, are going to be perfect. Any other really important questions? Uh, yes, they, they all are. Can each component of a wall style be calculated on a worksheet? On a worksheet, yes. for instance, yeah. Yes, great. Next. It's a, I don't want to show you how to do it. Um, I, I don't think that was Neil asking that question, but no. Neil and I have actually done it online. I run a subscription website where people come along every month to talk about Vectorworks. And this is it here. And I think Neil and I, one month, we had a, um, I run a, a group for BIM, for special interest groups related to building information modeling or architecture. And so what we've done is we've done these um, special interest groups and we actually set up how to calculate the um, the areas of that was which one of these was it? It was one of these. I think it might be this one. Uh, we looked at wall framing. We and oh, we looked at um, adding prices and materials to get a total cost. And we and we looked at setting up a worksheet so that you can actually calculate all the individual areas of all the individual wall components. And it is certainly possible. Now that website, learn.archoncad.com. Um, every month I write a manual. This month I wrote a manual for what's new in Vectorworks. I didn't show everyone. I wanted to show everyone what I'd written because I went through all the new features and I tried to group them together into, into um, what I called needs. So the need is to make the stairs easier. There's the, um, the feature from Vectorworks. And here's the benefit to you, curtain walls. There's my need, curtain walls. There's my two tools better control over walls. Um, I didn't show you the rectangular drawing mode, I'm afraid, um, and I didn't show you the trim tool working on walls. They're really cool. They're really quick. And there's a couple of other little things that are, that are really fast, but I'm afraid, Barb, we're, we're running out of time. So, yes, thank you. That's, that was a perfect plug. And uh, for a perfect ending, I want to just ask you a, a very quick question that we got at the beginning, but I think uh, it would you know, uh, be appropriate now. Is, it any, is there any hot keys to switch between perspective and isometric views? Give us this, the hot key, if there's any. Oh, between isometric and perspective. Yeah, I'm so sorry, I think what they mean is orthogonal projection and perspective projection. No. Yes. No. Okay. Well, that's, that's cool. Okay. Well, thank you so much. Uh, the questions were pouring, and I think uh, we, we did the best we could to keep up. and. Um, especially you, Jonathan, I think uh, you delivered again. Um, so I'm going to take the screen back. Uh, sorry to do that. I know I'm going to disappoint everybody. And let me know if you see my screen now. Yeah, I you? see it now. Great. Okay, so um, I want to thank everybody for attending this webinar. I want to remind you all to visit our Novage uh, page at Noveg.com and check out Vectorworks 2015. Um, remember that Noveg is, is the best way to buy design software online, bar none. For information on the latest specials and new releases on a huge array of design software, join the Noveg network and like us on Facebook, Google Plus or Twitter. In our upcoming webinar, we will have 3ds Max and Space Mouse Pro workflows. Uh, so um, check out our uh, webinar list. There's 
a huge list of webinars coming up in the future and there might be one that interests you too. Uh, to rewatch today's webinar um, or previous webinars, remember to check out the Novage Vimeo or YouTube channel and there's a lot to choose from in our playlist. I want to thank you all again for joining us and um, wish everybody a great day or night and it's just the beginning of the day for Jonathan on uh, the other side of the world so thank you for waking up so early and um, running a fantastic demonstration. Thank you very much Barbara, thanks for having me, it's been a lot of fun. And thank you and thank to all the attendees for the uh, incredible questions. Thank you all and uh, see you in the next webinar. Bye.